My fellow Bahamians, I am grateful to God for this opportunity to address you at the beginning of this new year. On behalf of my wife Patricia and the members of the Free National Movement, I would like to extend best wishes to each of you for the upcoming year and pray that this year will be safe, healthy, and prosperous for you and your loved ones. For many of you, 2014 has been difficult. We faced many challenges. Bahamians continued to experience high unemployment. The fear of crime is at an all-time high, and many have lost loved ones as a result of violent crime. My heart goes out to all those affected by the scourge of crime, and it is my prayer that God's peace, healing, and blessing will bring comfort. In this new year, the Free National Movement will become more active, more visible, and vigilant. I am grateful for the support received during our recent convention, and we have seen positive changes in our party with our new leadership team of Peter Turncrest as Deputy Leader and Chairman Michael Pintard. We are encouraged by the positive response we have already received. I can assure every Bahamian that my team and I will continue to work together on several fronts to help improve the quality of life for Bahamians in general, but especially those who are hurting and not able to enjoy the Bahamian dream. We are making the necessary preparations to once again assume leadership and rescue our nation in 2017 or whenever the next general election is called. In 2014, we experienced an increase in the amount of murders and with it, an increase in the fear of crime in our country. This must change in this new year. This year cannot be business as usual, for it was Albert Einstein who said, it is insanity to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. The Bahamas cannot remain on the same path, and we must break the current evil grip crime has on our nation. Therefore, the leadership of the Free National Movement will mobilize its members to work with various stakeholders throughout the Bahamas, but especially in New Providence. We must have an open and honest review of our current crime-fighting strategies. We must expand those measures that work and adjust or scrap those that do not. We need effective programs that produce meaningful results and not just catchy slogans. We, in the FNM, pledge to work with all stakeholders to review, support, and introduce new crime-fighting initiatives. While I admit it is difficult to legislate morality, we must as a government and as a people lead the Bahamas back to a place where high values, ethical and biblical standards are encouraged. This must start with the top and move throughout our country. One key path of this approach is the enforcement of laws regardless of who or where the lawbreakers are. Our team has a plan which includes prevention strategies, medium and long-term strategic programs. However, we recognize that urgent action is required now to reduce the fear that has gripped far too many in our beloved country and to dramatically reduce the bloodshed in our once peaceful streets and homes. To this end, we pledge to support plans that will bring immediate improvement. The government should immediately, in 
engage more community and church leaders to intervene in ongoing conflicts. We introduce and expand the Volunteer Bahamas program. Similar to tourist areas, increase saturation patrols which must be seen and felt in hotspot areas. Introduce strong and specific settings and guidelines for our judiciary to ensure penalties fit the severity of the crime, which is the expectation of any right-thinking Bahamian. In the coming days, we will further make public our ongoing meetings and plan of action. We will move with the urgency our situation requires. As forecasted last year, it is our plan to fundamentally transform our inner city communities to improve the standard of living of our people and eradicate the habitat that breeds criminality and hopelessness. If we want to change their lives, we must change their environment. Life continues to be challenging for those who live in the over the hill area. The PLP continues to neglect these areas. Therefore, we intend to deepen our discussions with key stakeholders to share our framework for such an initiative. In the second quarter of this year, we intend to initiate a transformative community project as a pilot of what is possible if you have focused leadership in charge of the government. The FNM, in our next term in government, will introduce tax-free zones for revitalization of over the hill, the inner city, and depressed areas. The inner city is where my heart lies. It is my story, and it has shaped my passion to make the entire Bahamas a better place. Value-added tax became law on January 1st. While our party fundamentally opposed VAT, we must now encourage all Bahamians to abide by the existing law implemented by the PLP government. VAT will increase the cost of living and will cause a price rise in most items and services we purchase. I encourage all Bahamians to, as best as possible, use wise budgeting practices. The FNM has established a committee to review the implications of VAT and the possibility of repealing VAT on all breadbasket items, all children's clothing, electricity and water, savings products, all health coverage and insurance. These simple measures would provide relief to the poor and the declining middle class. The government should tax, however, the winnings of the recently enacted gaming legislation. The FNM also believes that additional help should be provided by the declaration of an annual tax-free day in August, associated with the back-to-school shopping time frame to assist families with school-aged children. We are very concerned by the many reports of overpricing by businesses, which took place even before VAT's implementation. To this end, the FNM will be vigilant and watchful with the best interests of the people at heart. The PLP government has unfortunately already mismanaged VAT's implementation. Guidelines were being changed and released days before the law took effect, which not only caused inconvenience to businesses and consumers, but also cost them financially. Unfortunately, the rollout was filled with confusion and difficulty. The government should have given a clearly defined transition period, which should have included specific guidelines and time frames. 
In addition, the government has failed to appoint a VAT controller. This is a full-time job and should be separate from the financial secretary, especially during this crucial stage. The government should be tightening the reins on spending and practice fiscal responsibility, which should be the focus of a financial secretary. In the coming year, our FNM team will closely monitor this PLP government spending and will expose wasteful spending practices throughout the revitalized Public Accounts Committee. We must ensure that the additional taxes collected from you, the public, are not squandered by the wasteful and unnecessary spending we have witnessed over these past two and a half years. The FNM will create a special VAT unit headed by my deputy leader, Peter Turnquist. We encourage the public to contact the FNM VAT unit with all concerns and issues. The unit will seek to advocate and bring to the government's attention these issues and concern and will seek to have them resolved for the public. We will be releasing contact details for the unit in the upcoming weeks. Unemployment levels remain high in 2014. The government must move swiftly and refocus its efforts on the unemployed. We call upon the government to extend the maximum period for the National Insurance Unemployment Benefit implemented by the FNM from 13 weeks to 26 weeks. The FNM will reveal its plan to overhaul our employment laws and after careful consideration and consultation, incrementally increase the minimum wage. 2014 has also seen an unprecedented amount of labor unrest, particularly with public servants. The Bahamas has been blessed with dedicated public servants who must be treated with fairness and with dignity. The FNM will play its role in helping to bring sound, principled leadership on all labor issues. We are offended by the constant threats leveled at public servants by the PLP government. The same people who wooed you during the last election and promised to fix all your ills. Education must be high on the government's priorities in 2015. The, we eagerly await the PLP's report on the new schools promised this fiscal year. Focused attention must be given to implementing best practices and developing top performing schools throughout our nation. Family Island students who qualify for COB should be provided with full scholarships, including Roman board, along with a monthly stipend. Family Island development remain on the PLP's neglect list. This year, the FNM will begin to reveal its Family Island development plan which includes providing domestic tourism incentives and providing proper infrastructure such as roads, docks, and clinics, wherein some must be improved, some built, while all must be maintained. The plan also includes provision for some of the taxes collected in our family islands to be allocated to those islands for their growth and development. Particular attention will be paid to domestic incentives for Bahamians who invest in the family islands. Immigration will continue to be a significant issue in 2015. We in the FNM will continue to fully support the government in the enforcement of our immigration laws and will continue to oppose anyone who calls for a boycott of the Bahamas. Enforcement, however, 
must be humane, must not infringe on the rights of ordinary bohemians. We are mindful of the many allegations of abuse by some officials and expect a speedy, transparent investigation forthwith. This immigration policy, however, must not be used to distract the public's attention from the poor performance of this government. If we are to believe this is a genuine attempt to solve our immigration challenges, this government must target Bahamian owners who permit their land to be used as shanty towns. Target Bahamians and expat employers who knowingly hire illegal immigrants. The minister must come clean on the treasonous sale of visas in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which has been investigated by the police force. Resolve the Cuban abuse scandal. The government must display clear leadership and immediately dismiss from the Bank of the Bahamas the chairman of the board of directors, other involved board members, and the managing director, all of whom had overseen the present deterioration and financial chaos in the bank today. This year, we will be calling on this government to make Bahamian ownership a priority. The time is now for Bahamians to function in an environment where ownership is not just permitted, but fully encouraged and facilitated. This year, the FNM will reveal plans for the overhaul of our land laws and a more effective process to grant title to crown land, generation property, and commonage land. Bahamians will also confront the issues of oil drilling and protection of our natural resources. The FNM believes all natural resources should be owned and protected for the use and primary benefit of Bahamians. The FNM supports the drafting and approval of a national development plan. It was an important part of the FNM's platform and continues to be a high priority of my party. Any serious discussion about the national development plan must include the opposition in a significant way. We therefore look forward this year to making a substantial contribution to the overdue discussion on the National Development Plan. Bahamians will no longer accept empty short-term promises which only provide temporary and fleeting hope but have no possibility of fulfillment. In conclusion, 2014 was the year of broken promises and missed opportunities. In 2015, the Bahamas will face serious challenges and we need more than broken promises. The Bahamas needs a Freedom of Information Act, Fiscal Responsibility Act, and a real mortgage relief program the Bahamas needs an independent ombudsman to fight for the interests of the ordinary man, especially in case of disputes of VAT. The public demands our government functions with integrity and at a high standard. We, in the FNM, are the government of the sunshine, and we will govern in the sunshine. The hallmark of our administration will be selflessness, transparency, accountability, and honesty. My fellow Bahamians, you can count on us to work tirelessly for you and with you to ensure that the Bahamas is advanced, protected, 
and safe. May God bless you and may God bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you.